Welcome to The Business Strategist, the show that gives business owners and entrepreneurs game-changing business strategies that can be used in scaling and transforming a business. Sharing deep dive conversations with industry experts, thought leaders and clients facing real challenges and uphill struggles. Brought to you by business strategist, former elite athlete, international speaker and best-selling author, Adam Strong. Would you like to learn how to stand out and elevate your brand and create massive impact? Well, in today's podcast on The Business Strategist, we have the amazing Daphne Deloosh. Now, Daphne is an award-winning international designer, brand expert. She's a strategist. She's an innovative event creator. But more importantly, she's also a film director. She has so many amazing skills. It's really going to be a great episode. I've known Daphne for probably a good couple of years now. And I tell you what, she is what we call the best of the best. And we're going to have some great conversations today. Uh, What Daphne does is she injects the wow factor into brands, right? She creates concepts or takes concepts and turns them into thriving global brands. And that's what I love about her. Um, she's got an amazing amount of creativity and expertise. And effectively, what she does is she loves to collaborate with some of the big influencers and thought leaders out there, and uh, including celebrities. That's a little bit about Daphne. And uh, a few things we're actually going to be talking about today, just to give you some context, is we're going to be talking a little bit about emotional connection. I feel that's a really good conversation to talk about. Um, We're also going to be talking a little bit about how everybody, including yourselves that's listening, that are looking to get seen because it can be a really difficult, it can be really difficult to really be seen out there and get the attention onto your brand. And that's what we call unique selling proposition or differentiation. We're going to have a great conversation around that. Listen, without further ado, Daphne, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, it's so lovely to be in your company, Adam. And and also too, Great, it's sir. like every every conversation we've had is always we get deep very quickly. And that's what I love about you. You're like mountains. Well, got more a huge mountain of value in you. So you're, you're great, great time to I, talk to. I appreciate I appreciate the kind compliment. Thank you so much. And we've known each other for, probably for a good couple of years, of course, for a mutual acquaintance. And I'm so drawn back by skill sets that you have. You came from architectural design, didn't you? And then you kind of like really up your skill set in terms of graphic design, brand strategy and stuff. And I just love that about you. Why diversity of skill sets and how you kind of bring the magic together does that make sense yeah it does it does well it's been quite a journey because the thing is I started off um in 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 film when I was 19 uh, and film and brand and then that turned into design then that turned into design and build then that but the design and build I always used to create these huge projects right through Europe and even across to America um from brand up because it has to be from brand up but I love, love what I do. Love it. I know you, you and uh, you know, just kind of, you know, speaking offline, you're like you, I can tell like you are someone that's in it, in her element. You know, you're someone that really loves to, you know, loves to create, loves to innovate, but more importantly, you're, you're a bit like me. You, you love creating results and transformation. Exactly. And the biggest joy is actually to, to the person who's standing in front of you to bring out their talent to bring out their message to bring out their purest brand that for me gives me so much joy because it's a knock-on effect it's like a domino effect then then they are they are actualized absolutely they are absolutely very good but listen let's get let's dive straight in because i know branding is one of those topics that everyone seems to want to talk about but i think in this day and age more specifically, I feel like branding has never become so much more important than it has today. Um, you probably agree with that. 
but I, I I also see the same common mistakes being made over and over and over again, especially on the kind of concepts of brand identity. How can, say, an entrepreneur or a business or a brand avoid from just blending into a crowded marketplace without creating that uniqueness about them? Any thoughts? Yes. First, the first problem is that people don't understand what brand is. They don't understand what, because mm. there's a difference between brand and branding. And there's a difference. Well, there's so, I always talk about a thousand layers of business and a thousand layers of branding. But the problem is a lot of people just talk about their brand or their brand. And this shows up in some very strange ways. If you're into networking, you can actually see people kind of like walk through a room and they're wearing blue or they're wearing green or red and they'll say proudly I'm wearing my brand well the biggest thing is not to confuse your customer if I meet someone wearing red or blue I am so confused because I don't know what you who you are what you are where your value is or what your message is yes so the thing is that today in today to me, when I go out and talk to so many people, brand, branding equals confusion. And this is where diving deep is where the magic is. I think that's, I think you made a really valid point there, actually. And I do think that there is a definitely an element of confusion of what brand and branding are, because they are two different, they're two very different words. But I feel like many people that I speak to kind of feel like that it's kind of, saturated into one does that make sense and as as you rightly pointed out it's kind of it creates the confusion which then leads to a lack of clarity which is what you've just pointed out very good and what do you think from your perspective especially with a lot of entrepreneurs and leaders that are listening to our podcast today what do you think they're making in terms of the same mistakes like what are you seeing in the marketplace whether it be on social media or when you're sitting down with a consultation with somebody and you're seeing them make the same mistake and are you seeing any common patterns or are you seeing them kind of like oh I've seen that before I've seen that before any thoughts yeah the thought is it's this confusion again Uh, the thing is people they like to they can be money hunters they can be quite predatory in their behavior There's nothing wrong, Mm. like I love talking about money and I love creating money models, yeah? And actually when people start working with me, that's one of the first things that we do. We do three things first, but that the money money model is where's your money is comes up very early. And the thing is, so this predatory thing is like people, when they go networking, and this is one thing that it stood out to me so clearly when, because uh, I was in Germany for 18 years. And when I came back to the UK and I started to network, I just felt like lamb to slaughter. I felt like I was the fresh blood in the room. And it really made me really elevate my branding uh, methodologies really quickly because, you know, networking isn't about throwing yourself at somebody and seeing what you can sell to them. It's about relationship building. But the common mistake that people make is they don't prepare for their relationship build. So first of all, it's about clarity and direction. It's about, you know, what is your value exchange? And actually starting to build relationships up with people that you genuinely can solve their problems for them. Yeah, but not just to make friends with people and say, oh, you've got a problem. I'm going to make friends with you. But it's about taking a certain demographic of people or a certain subject and make sure what you're creating actually fits them. And if it doesn't fit them like a beautifully made shoe, then why are you doing that? I think I see a common mistake that I see um, founders, CEOs, entrepreneurs make they try all sorts of things and throw it against the wall and hopefully one thing sticks and then they're hoping that something will come out of that well no that it it, it, you can actually cause yourself a lot of stress you can waste a lot of money and a lot of time and also too you can become really disheartened and that that's a shame especially like I find 
out there in the world, most people are wonderful and everybody on this planet has a talent, a gift or something of value to bring to this earth. So, but they can get very lost in so many distractions. And the worst thing, this is what I don't understand, Adam, and maybe maybe the listeners can I really identify with this one. Why on earth does an entrepreneur ask somebody for advice that has no experience? <laughs> like, you wouldn't ask a kangaroo how to date, would you? Yeah. You wouldn't say, hey, kangaroo, look, I mean, I'm being bizarre and, and, and giving you a really a, a bizarre example. But to me, it's as mad as that. You know, people, they say, oh, look, well, dinner. oh I talked to my friend about branding. What does your friend do? Oh, he's been unemployed for three years. Oh, OK. Why would you do that? But I think that the thing is, it's that goes. I do. I do get it as in how the brain works. The thing is, the brain loves comfort. And it likes a familiar. And this is another thing why people don't want, they don't actually take enough action because their whole brain is trying to protect themselves. I get it. And the thing is, we have to protect ourselves in many ways. But when it comes to kind of like expertise, you know, ask somebody who's done it bigger and bolder and better than you. Talk to them. They're the people you should be talking to. Your best friends, be best friends. Have, you know, do best friend stuff, but don't be talking business with people who've got no experience. I agree. Uh, I mean, what you're talk- what you're referring about is kind of brand by association, I'm assuming, because it's like anything. It's, why would you take advice from an unemployed person and expect results? It just doesn't make any sense to me. You want to take advice yeah. from people that know their trade it's kind exactly. of my thought well, um employed person could, could be like the thing is i don't think that they would be a top brand expert because the thing is if you are really polishing your craft polishing your no polishing your gifts and helping people how would you have time to be unemployed if you're there are many unemployed people there they're just not an, aligned with their gift and their skill it's not that there's anything wrong wrong with them. They have all the goods inside them. They're just not in the right groove. Very true. Love it. Some good stuff. When I give a lot of discovery calls, one of the things I love to do is go over, over onto people's social media channels, especially on LinkedIn, by the way. And it just amazes me how out of sync people's brand messaging and their it's completely completely out of sync. So it just what they're saying to me just isn't congruent with what they're actually publishing online. Um, now, from your perspective, being a brand strategist, what is the process for ensuring someone's brand messaging is synced across all, not just channels, but across every customer touch point? I think that the thing is, the first thing, what the question is for everybody out there listening, how good are you? at taking care of yourself and how good are you at preparing for business for yourself because I see this over and over again there are very many wonderful people out there but they're so busy but not always busy in the right ways they can be incredibly distracted so the thing is the first thing you've got to prepare to do a wonderful LinkedIn profile but the thing is, on, on a LinkedIn profile, it's so important to have a great photo, but not a photo where you, you look like a little pin and you can't see, um, or you're wearing inappropriate clothes, meaning you look like you're on a sum, summer holiday. That's great if you're a travel agent, but you there's nothing like ha- having a, your like facial recognition. No, it's about other people being able to see your eyes and it's about having a picture that you're looking at so when someone looks at you they can see that you're a person they can read your face number one don't also to that first line of what you are and what you do don't be shy you know put all the bells and whistles up you know say what you are you know but work on it craft on it now the but the biggest thing that i don't see on LinkedIn profiles is social proof. And the thing is, like, if you dig around on my LinkedIn, yeah, 
you can dig around, you can find lots of social proof. Next thing is show your expertise, write blog posts. It's in, and also um, be gracious and think about reciprocity. You see other people that have written um, on LinkedIn about subjects. Don't just read it, you know, show your appreciation that gives them a, just a like, you know, give them a celebrate, give them a heart, you know, write something. Say, well done on your post or hadn't thought of that one or, you know, thank you, you know, and, and start it because this is all about relationship building. But the first relationship to build is the one with yourself and to take care of what you're doing. It's interesting. I um, We did a, a great session actually a few weeks back with uh, Asman Alec. And uh, he built a, a subscriber list or a LinkedIn followers of over almost 250,000. He dived in deep about um, uh, LinkedIn commenting strategy. We called it the LinkedIn commenting matrix. And uh, he, he talks the importance of not just posting great content, but also, as you rightly pointed out, leaving a comment, not just generally being candid and kind and sharing appreciation, but actually to share opinion and insight and actually that's something that we've we've been doing and honestly it makes a way bigger difference especially from an attention perspective it makes a great difference but i think you made some really good points there around uh social proof you know, profile pictures i still get people tr- trying to connect with me without a profile picture and i'm like i just don't know what they're hiding i don't know what their intentions are but that's just that's just me that's that's fair enough you've got every right because also the thing is they're Mm. they're ill prepared because they get to be in front of you in the first three seconds your mind is either going to accept them or spit them out so the shot that they took to contact contact you they lost it they lost that shot um and this is a shame because they might be great but also in this day of um, online digital media, you also have to be careful because there are all sorts of things out there that you have to be full of. You know, not into doom scrolling or talk about like negative things, but the thing is, you protect yourself when you prepare yourself. 100%. And another agree. thing to add before we move on from LinkedIn, there is a beautiful space on LinkedIn that you can actually put. You can sign a banner and put that up there. And it amazes me how many powerful businesses or businesses that have so much to offer, they don't even have a decent banner. So they're not helping their customers really understand because it could be you actually, somebody um, somebody is, is approaching you and they could be like, somebody that you would love to have a conversation with but based on their photo and their banner then you might not think they're legitimate you know and that's shame for both parties first impressions count is what i say definitely branding for me is all about emotional connection it's not some people might see it as logos and colors which it isn't of course it's it's about emotional connection and and obviously that can lead to raving fans it can lead to lots of loyalty and and things like that how do you suggest brands and leaders entrepreneurs what would you recommend in terms of helping them to build an emotional connection with their audience what are what do you suggest? How do you? How do people go about doing that? Is there a? Is there a secret source? Is there a framework? Central point that you can start building from. Um, what, what, what I, how I do it is, it depends what your brand triggers are. Okay, so for example, some brands, their brand triggers might be uh, trust, um, prestige, luxury. Uh, now. If you take another brand and then say that you've got danger, need, winners category, those two things will take your mind in different, they will gravitate in different ways. So if I go to danger, speed and winners, then I might be using colours like gold and red and black. I might be promoting a Formula One brand. Yeah, now that's got something completely different 
to a wealth management office, Triggers needs to be trust, prestige and mystique. So the thing is, the mystery is a wealth, wealth managers or wealth creators or, or the office office people who, who work with incredibly wealthy people, uh, that, that it has to be mystique. That information isn't for every person. So you see, with mystique, prestige and trust, there are certain colours that you would use. You would use blues, you would use golds. You wouldn't necessarily be using fonts in black, black. You would be using certain tones of greys and blues, all these things. So it really depends on the brand triggers and it depends on the brand family. It's very deep. Now, it actually goes even deeper than that because it also goes to how a human mind works the most fantastic processes are are mind body heart and soul because we read and we scan and we process so fast that we don't realize how incredible we are but we we know instinctively that something is good or not good Uh, but the thing is you know but with branding you can really calibrate things to work in the scientific way that branding can. Like McDonald's is a fantastic example. They've got red and they've got yellow. So the thing is that those colours make you hungry. Also, too, they're fun. They're fun and they're fast. And the kind of red that McDonald's use is not a dangerous red. There's those other reds that are danger, danger reds. Triggers, they actually evoke certain emotions. Is it safe? Is it dangerous? We want to create a brand that it doesn't need to be safe, it doesn't need to be dangerous, but perhaps it needs to be calming. Perhaps it needs to be reassuring. Yeah. Or perhaps it you need to it needs to create a little bit of fear. Authority. That's a great brand. Author, authoritative brands. Subject it is or what what industry it is for me, I I I can do any of it happily. Just out of curiosity, um, you picked up, uh, actually, uh, uh, I had an epiphany when you were speaking. Say our listeners, we, we've all got kind of ICPs, ideal customer profiles, right? And in terms of like you mentioned around brand triggers, which is a fascinating subject, um, how does one know what the brain triggers are of the ICP. Because I, I, I see a lot of people, they have the idea of, I work going to get to this specific person or this ideal profile. But if they've got their brain triggers all mixed up, there's going to be a massive disconnect. Would you not agree? Yeah, and it happens a lot and a lot. And this is why a lot of um, founders, creators, um, entrepreneurs, where, where they are so powerfully potent but they can weaken themselves because they don't have the right brand strategy brand or, or in thinking. In creating an insurance brand, I need to create brand triggers of, of um, prestige and trust. Yes, it has to have a touch of prestige because also people really want to have the best insurance they can have. But what are you selling? Are you selling insurance? No, you're selling peace of mind, protection. People are usually unaware that they need protecting, but they have a lot of worry and they don't have peace of mind. So the thing is, this is when you play snap and then, then you're then you're in that vortex of this space and then you start to build up your methodologies and your offerings, your services and your, your the things that people can buy or get from you. Then you work in that space. But a lot of people, they're just, it's like throwing this thing on the wall again, hoping it sticks. They just think that any client is better than no client. But five wrong clients, Uh, it can mm. ruin your business. Oh, we know that. Um, Interestingly enough, I want to pick up something that you said, because McDonald's was a great example. You know, you use the yellow and red colors. I don't know about you, but I found that, working with a, a lot of businesses probably the same for you is that is that they don't if for example we look at color palettes with regards to brain triggers right you used uh, an example of uh, you're in an insurance company you're trying to create peace of mind is what you're saying but then i guess then there'll be a 
color or a color palette, color identity that is going to be more kind of geared towards kind of emotional connection. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because colors do connect with you. Be disruptive in your graphic design and your or your brand design, and you can start going. You can challenge the color wheel. You can challenge people. So the thing is, you'll get a wow effect for a minute, but then it dissipates. And the thing is, with your brand palette, with your brand messaging, it's about having a continuous momentum of growth and movement with what you're messaging and what you're doing. So it depends. Now, the thing is, if you are going to promote a festival or perhaps there's some amazing DJ and he decides to put on a show in Ibiza and he wants to get everybody there and it's lastminute.com, well, that's the time to use kind of like outrageous colours, things that don't make sense, chaos, disruption, and then boom, bang, whack. It's yes and no, move on. Then. It it works, but not to do that in in kind of like in certain businesses. And this is why it, you can save a fortune and make a fortune by working that I I do things because then the thing is what you're doing you're building. It's, it's like the earth. Then you're you're creating earth, or you're building from earth that actually will grow things. Not not earth that doesn't grow things anymore. So the earth has to be great. The seed has to be great. You have to understand what that seed will do. You have to nurture it to grow it. You get flowers, you get fruits, and then you repeat the cycle. So your harvest gets better and better and better. Said a lot in a very simple way that many people can understand. You don't prepare the ground and you don't know. And say you're going to put, you you put some turnip seeds in the grass and in, in the ground instead of flowers and you want strawberries but you get tur- turnips gardening so it's the same with kind of creating branded businesses but a lot of people they have businesses but they're not branded some people have brands but they don't have business behind it they don't have a business model they don't have a service or an offering There's a lot of messy businesses and brands out there we'll never be yep. unemployed <laughs> love that love that um, now, interestingly enough, and uh, I think this is I'd probably I'd probably speak for most of the, most of our listeners here is that we're kind of in this I wouldn't say fight, but it's kind of like the need to want to get attention. Right, everyone wants more visibility. Everyone wants more attention. From your perspective, how can brands and leaders in particular in, introduce kind of more innovation? should we say, without losing the essence of what their brand is and how they're unique. I mean, you you are an innovation expert, really. Thank you for that. that. I'm glad to be seen. Yes. Well, the thing is, it starts with actualization feelings. Now, the thing is, we humans, we can be taken in by people who've got the gift of the gab, Okay. Yeah. And there are many people out there that have got amazing gift of the gab. Now, when you've got the gift of the gab, the secret source is to make sure you've got your methodologies behind you. You've got your business models. You've got everything set up because having the gift of the gab and giving it a good old talk is going to be a temporary thing. Because if your stuff doesn't stand up on its own, it will fail. It will drop off. How do you get noticed? You get noticed by being the purest form of whatever it is. For example, let's take some brands out there. Let's take some of the designer stuff. You go to go to Chanel and you look at their makeup, you look at their clothing, you look at everything that Chanel is about. There's a lot of people who try to copy copy these things, and there's copies out there. That's okay. Or Dior. But the thing is, as, as for a woman, there's nothing like a, a Dior or, or a Chanel lipstick. Not in the quality, in the texture, how it looks, how it feels. Yeah, you can get something half price, and it will be red, but it won't be red. It won't be 
that special thing. So the thing is, this is how people start, how, how you can get to stand out. It's about really crafting your service or really raising the quality in what you do, whether it's making an incredible handbag, if you're into handbags, um, if you're into lipstick, if you're into cars, or say you're just into, it's not just anything, it's so important. Say, say wellness, say food. Most in, uh, um, Jamie Oliver, years ago, he started to really get attention. It wasn't necessarily the complexity of what he was making. It was the quality of the ingredients that he was putting into his recipes and making it quick and easy. Yes, so he made good food, sexy, fun and possible, right? That's why he stood out. Now, there could there could be another guy who could be making a very complex recipe and he's made it really complex because he wants to save money on ingredients and make a lot of money. But the stuff tastes disgusting. The quality is horrible. You know, the gift of the gab, the gab stuff runs out and you're left with this yuck. You know, Jamie Oliver uh, came round tonight to my place and made me, you know, a nice little, a little, yeah, concoction of something. I know it'd be wonderful, even if you put three things in. So he's memorable, you know. Um, and that's the thing. It, it's just like I know with myself, I I think it's so important. It's not, it's not what necessarily you do for people. It's how you make them feel. So it's your lipstick is going to make you feel, mm, right? Or, perhaps, you know, he might have like an incredible phone that's like just doing everything for him. Or he might love his car or, or whatever he's into or his running shoes. Or it's how it makes people feel. And that's where there's a huge clue. Um, so if your stuff is confusing, if your stuff isn't making people feel nice, that then then you have less of a chance to stand out. Um, uh, and, you know, somebody gave me a really nice comment the other day on I went to a networking thing by accident. I didn't I don't go networking anymore. Although should I? Shouldn't I? Or whatever. I like I'm so busy. But so if I, if I do go out networking, it's a random effect. But he wrote something really nice on the post. He put in brackets to me, you shine. How lovely. So I obviously made, made him feel good. When I gave my presentation in the room, which I didn't know I was supposed to be doing, I could see all these happy faces, all these faces which where their eyes are open and they're smiling. This is what the effect. So you want to have the 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 yes factor effect on people so you're making them feel good inspired and that's how you can stand out so you stand out with the quality of what you're giving people and the energy that's running through it and then the stuff actually has to do it has to work for the the the, the consumer yeah and then that's why if you look at it like that, that's, of course, why a lot of people fall behind the wayside, because perhaps they're too busy um, hustling for the dollar dollar bill instead of doing a good job. Business is terrifying. It's not easy. And creating a brand and <laughs> being a founder and creating all this all this business and to be a leader, I, it is not for the same faint hearted. So. You know, just as parenting. <laughs> so anybody, I agree. In, I agree. In any of those, in any of those places, they all deserve medals and much respect. And it's not about telling people they're doing it wrong. It's having good conversations and and have discovery sessions and have to kind of find out. Well, let you know, in this mass of creation I'm doing in business, that where are the weeds, the seeds, and the flowers. Yeah. So what do we chuck out? What do we plant? And what do we create? And we keep refining and refining. It's never about criticism for me. I know that we're kind of coming towards the end of our conversation, but there is something that kind of crept into my mind, actually, which was if our listeners are looking to improve their brand, what would be a good starting point to start from the five top tips about where to get started and, and, and how to get started? Well, let's start with three different things that you can do. The first thing you can do with me is book a discovery session. 
So this is like like between 90 minutes and two hours, maybe two hours and 15 minutes, no longer, because otherwise it gets like too much, where people can literally uh, deep dive and I can I can take them on a massive deep dive. So they're talking, I'm talking, we're looking, we're scanning, we're, uh, they're throwing perhaps very complex questions at me. Perhaps I'm challenging them in a negative sense, but <clears throat> to kind of like crack open their magic golden eggs for their abundance. Um, so that can be something really wonderful to do. And that's that's like very affordable for most business people um but it's of huge value and then that gives people to kind of try things out and 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 to to kind of feel my energy and feel how I work with them for them because it's not about me it's about them so there's that discovery session the second one it's a bit of a meteor process. It takes between f- about four weeks, four to six weeks. I don't want it to take longer than six weeks because it's about you going out there and converting and actually or, or, and taking action in parts of your business and your branding that needs attention quickly. So this six week, four to six week process is called a clarity and direction model. So I go through, it's anything from, from seven to nine slides and we go through step by step clarity and direction of kind of your the architecture of your business and we throw out the weeds we actually make a plan uh, often other brands are created in that model but I can't create a, a, a brand within that model, uh, but you recognize that there's an opportunity to do three more things that make money that are congruent to what you do, which will elevate what you do. And then the next part of it, it will be looking, well, what do you need to do that? Who are the customers? Where are they? Where's the money? And what money do you need to spend to make that happen, if any? Because sometimes you don't need to be spending any more money. It's about different behaviours and also different um, conversations with people. And then there's the part where they recommend that they need to be doing filming or creating websites or redoing websites. And some businesses actually, you know, a lot of, maybe hear a lot of people saying, oh, my God, I can't believe she said that. But some businesses don't even need a website. It depends what it is. Some businesses do. Websites are terribly confusing. There's a lot of people out there that don't understand web design, but it's not necessarily there's some really fantastic web developers and people who do great things on web. But what should be um, implanted in your website is your business model. And I see it again and again and again, all these websites, but there's no business model behind it. So anyway, once we've gone through this clarity and direction model, People know they have clarity, direction, and then they know like what their three months, six months, nine months, 18 months plan should be. They'll know where the, where the power points to focus and strengthen on, the things to stop doing. And then if there's any more costs to come, then they're listed out what they could be, whether it's not necessarily costs with myself, but other things for them. The time they've done that, they're so clear and then they take action every time the time we've done the clarity and direction model that it's then that that point is fantastic because then you get people saying great I can't wait let's do this next or that next whatever it is and but we create what you need not not what's on my list I mean my list of what I can do for you is huge but it's not about me it's about what you need so then you go into then you've you've got your own assessment of yourself and your business and your brand. Um, And then you can see clearly whether it's sales and marketing that you need help on, branded sales and marketing, or whether it is brand build, yeah, that it is uh, creating key and brand assets to to make sure that your business and the right um, to exit. Because this is another thing that a lot of businesses, they, people, it's heartbreaking. They work like, I don't know, 20 or 30 years or something. They want to sell it. And then they have um, 
not as much value in their business as they, they thought they could have because a lot of it is like it's the founder or the person in the business when he or she goes there's no business and then there's no intellectual property or brand asset assets but if they'd started to create those then they would have uh, models and strategies and and things that can be copied emulated uh, which hold great value so therefore you would sell your business at a greater value Listen, um, this has been a, a great conversation. Uh, so I just want to say thank you so much uh, for spending a bit of time here with me. You're very welcome. And it's been of questions. Um, and also, too, I think um, it's given your audience a flavor. You can see just one little question, how deep I go so quickly. And I go even deeper than that. But that's the point. Ask somebody that knows where you can. It's an Aladdin's cave. See what, what mm. treasures you can find for yourself. <laughs> and your business yeah, absolutely agree uh, for you guys that are listening in i hope that you've uh, got some value from me and daphne's conversations of welcome to connect with her over on social media and and her on her website of course and uh, we'll put all the links below so you enjoy today and hopefully we'll see you again on another episode uh, of here on the business strategies take care and uh, we'll speak to you soon Thanks for listening to The Business Strategist with Adam Strong. Follow Adam on LinkedIn, YouTube, and adamstrong.net. Leave a review on Apple or Spotify.